आई एम डॉक्टर अर्पित गर्ग आई एम वर्किंग एज अ सीनियर कंसल्टेंट एंडोक्रोनोलॉजिस्ट एंड डायबिटोलॉजिस्ट एट अमर हॉस्पिटल पटियाला टूडे आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ टाइप टू डायबिटीज इन एडल्ट पेशेंट्स सो आई विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद अ ब्रीफ केस इन एरियो सो वी हैव विद अस अ 52 इयर्स ओल्ड लेडी हु इज डायग्नोज्ड विद डायबिटीज फॉर द पास्ट 8 मंथ्स एंड व्हेन शी वाज डायग्नोज्ड विद डायबिटीज शी हैड एचपीवीएनसी ऑफ 9% along with that she is also suffering from hypothyroidism for which she is optimally treated so when she was diagnosed with diabetes she was advised lifestyle modifications and she was started on metformin 1000 mg per day she is working in the it sector and she has sedentary lifestyle she was not able to follow lifestyle modifications to the maximum like she was exercising about 15 to 20 minutes per day and her daily calorie intake was around 2000 to 2200 kilo calories per day she came back to us after 3 months when she had lost almost around 2 kgs but her hp1c was 8.5% and previously when she was diagnosed her hp1c was 9% she lives independently lifestyle as i have told she was not able to modify lifestyle to her maximum and she was optimally treated for her hypothyroidism her bmi is at 2 kg per meter square and blood pressure and heart rate are normal and rest of the systemic examination are normal so how should we go about this case so the i think this is a fairly a common case scenario which we get in our opds when we get a obese patient in her young age like she is 52 years old and she is having hp1c of 9% at the beginning all doctors suggest lifestyle modification but we all know that it is sometimes difficult for the patients to modify to the lifestyle to the extent which we tell them so though it is difficult for the patients to follow the lifestyle modification but it is still the first and the gold standard and after lifestyle modification the guidelines suggest metformin therapy but should we go for the single drug therapy or the monotherapy or should we go with the combination therapy that is the question in this patient this patient had hp1c of 9% so if we go by the guidelines the american diabetes association guidelines suggest use of the combination therapy in patients with hba1c of more than 8.9% at the baseline and american association of clinical endocrinologists guidelines they suggest that combination therapy should be initiated if the starting hba1c is more than 7.5% so what we practice in india we follow both the guidelines it depends on the discretion of the clinician who is treating the patient which guidelines he want to follow but in this patient who is obese who is having a1c of 9% i would personally go with the combination therapy and there are a lot of trials now with us which have shown that use of a monotherapy or a single drug therapy leads to early treatment failure and leads to a less durable glycemic control in the long term this means if you use a combination therapy so glycemic control will not be sustained till long term and the treatment failure rates are very high at 6 months so in this patient ideally a combination therapy should be used so what should be the combination therapy so guidelines suggest that metformin is still the first and the gold standard drug to be used in any type 2 diabetic adult patient until unless it is contraindicated or not tolerated so definitely we have to use metformin in our patient which other drug should be used along with the metformin we have multiple choices like we have with us dpp4 inhibitors we have with us sgl2 inhibitors we have sulfonylureas we have glp1 receptor agonists so the american diabetes association guidelines suggest that we should stratify the patient according to the risk factors so we have to see whether the patient is suffering from any chronic kidney disease or cardiovascular disease or any cardiovascular risk factors are there so if the patient is suffering from ckd or if any cardiovascular risk factors are there or if the patient is suffering from coronary artery disease then we should go with either sgl2 inhibitors or glp1 receptor agonist otherwise if the patient is not suffering from these two things that is the kidney disease or the cardiovascular disease then we can go either with the sgl2 inhibitors or glp1 receptor agonist or dpp4 inhibitors or sulfonylureas but nowadays the guidelines have put sulfonylureas down the hierarchy and the first line drugs which are suggested by almost all the guidelines including the european guidelines and the american guidelines the hierarchy is like sgl2 inhibitors and the glp1 receptor agonist they have been kept after the metformin like second line drugs and then come the dpp4 inhibitors after dpp4 inhibitors come the sulfonylureas and last is the role of the thiazolidine diones this hierarchy has been made because of the 
multiple benefits which are offered by the uh, SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 receptor agonists. That is, these drugs, as you all know, that a lot of CVOTs have been conducted, and these drugs have been shown to be cardioprotective, nephroprotective, and these drugs have been shown to reduce the microvascular complications of diabetes also. And same is the scenario with GLP-1 receptor agonists like liraglutide, dulaglutide, which we have with us in our Indian market. These drugs have been shown to be cardioprotective and nephroprotective. But these organ protections are not there with sulfonylureas or thiazolidinedione and neither they are there with the DPP-4 inhibitors. But DPP-4 inhibitors are kept above the sulfonylureas because DPP-4 inhibitors do not cause weight gain and DPP-4 inhibitors do not cause any hypoglycemia. But sulfonylureas, they cause weight gain. And the most significant side effect of sulfonylureas is the hypoglycemia, which can occur with sulfonylureas. And that is quite life-threatening and dangerous because once a patient suffers from hypoglycemia due to sulfonylureas, it lasts for about 72 hours. And it can be a very serious and patient has to be hospitalized because of the recent hypoglycemia, which can last for up to 72 hours. Thiazolidine dions have been kept almost at the last because of their adverse effects, like thiazolidine dions cause weight gain. And in cardiac patients, these drugs are not preferred because thiazolidine dions cause fluid retention. And because of this, these drugs can worsen heart failure. So going back to our case, we have with our patient who is obese, who is young, 52 years old. Otherwise, she is healthy. She is not having any significant comorbidities other than hypothyroidism, but she is obese. So we certainly need some drug which controls the blood glucose levels and we should promote weight loss and it should definitely not cause weight gain and it should protect her heart, it should protect her kidneys also and drugs should not have or a minimal risk of hypoglycemia. So considering these things in mind, we are left with choices like SGL2 inhibitors, GLP-1 receptor agonist and DPP-4 inhibitors. This patient had SPA1C of 9%, metformin is already started. Metformin comes in the high efficacy anti-hyperglycemic drug because it lowers down SPA1C to the tune of 1 to 1.5 percent. In this patient, I personally would like to keep HB1C to around 6.5 percent because she is healthy, she is young, and no significant comorbidities. So, I would like to keep a stringent glycemic target in this patient. So, use of metformin alone will definitely not bring down the HB1C to 6.5 percent. So, we have to use another drug. Coming to another drugs, if we use DPP4 inhibitors, DPP4 inhibitors are low efficacy drugs. These decrease the HB1C only 0.5 to 0.7%. So adding DPP-4 inhibitors to metformin will not bring down HB1C from 9% to 6.5%. So we definitely need some more potent drug than the DPP-4 inhibitors to bring down the blood glucose level to the target range. So we are left with choices SGLT2 inhibitor and GLP-1 receptor agonist. So till now we have with us GLP-1 receptor agonist. Both are injectables in Indian market. That is liraglutide and dulaglutide. Both are injectable. So I don't think so. Uh, most of our patients are not willing to take injectable drugs at the very beginning. Most of the patients, they want oral therapy. In India, patients go for the injectable at very late stages. Many times we try to convince the patient, but it is very difficult to convince the patient for injectable therapy. In this patient, I personally go with the choice of SGL2 inhibitor because SGL2 inhibitor will promote weight loss in this patient. It will, SGL2 inhibitors, they come in the moderate to high efficacy range, anti-hyperglycemic efficacy. They decrease the HB1C to the tune of 0.7 to 1% if you are using the SGL2 inhibitor to the full dosage. So I think SGL2 inhibitor is the right choice because it is cardioprotective, it is nephroprotective, it will cause weight loss also and with minimal risk of hypoglycemia. So I started this patient on SGL2 inhibitor along with metformin and when after three months this patient was followed up this patient had HP1C of 7.4%. So we are able to reduce HP1C from 9% to 7.4%. And I reinforced diet and exercise in this patient. And now this patient was doing brisk walk daily of one to one and a half hour per day. And she was taking diet of 1600 to 1800 kilocalories per day. And she had lost five kilograms of weight also. So almost all the benefits were there, but her blood glucose level were still on the little bit on the higher side. So what should we do now? So should we increase the dose of SGL2 inhibitor or should we increase the dose of metformin? She's currently on 2000 milligrams of metformin and she's on 25 milligrams of ampagliflozin. So we know that further increase in the dose of ampagliflozin and metformin is not possible. 
so we need to add one another drug what should be the another drug should we go with the sulfonyl urea dpp4 inhibitor or glp1 receptor agonist i personally would not go with the sulfonyl urea in this patient because of the adverse events with sulfonyl urea which i have told before that is hypoglycemia and weight gain and she is an it professional so she wanted best treatment which is possible she was not much concerned about the price also so i offered her dpp4 inhibitor and glp1 receptor agonist but she did not want to take any injectable therapy though a weekly drug is available but she was not willing so i started her on dpp4 inhibitor but since now we have combinations of sglt2 inhibitors and dpp4 inhibitor available with us in indian market so i started her on the combination of empagliflozin with linagliptin that is empagliflozin of 25 mg along with linagliptin of 5 mg combination was started along with metformin the metformin was continued at the full dose of 2000 mg per day and she was switched from empagliflozin to empalina combination of 25 by 5 mg and diet and exercise was reinforced and she was called back after 3 months so when she was again to us after 3 months she had hba1c of 6.7% so this decrease in hba1c from 7.4 to 6.7% occurred over a period of 3 months because she little bit decreased her calorie intake from 1800 to 1600 kilo calories per day by decreasing the number of chapatis previously she was taking four chapatis per day and now she brought it down to two and half to three chapatis per day and she increased the amount of proteins in her diet she increased the amount of dals and she amount of vegetables in her diet and she increased her exercise a little bit she started doing exercise of 1 to 1 hour 15 minutes of brisk walk along with that she started doing some stretching exercises also so with optimal lifestyle modification along with the pharmacotherapy which included metformin and empalina combination of 25 by 5 mg we were able to achieve hba1c of 6.7% and this pharmacotherapy was continued in this patient and this patient was called back after 3 months and again after 3 months when she came back to us her hba1c was 6.5% so we were able to achieve optimal glycemic control and that was also sustained at 6 months and then she was followed up every 6 monthly and for the last one year as she is on follow up with me her hba1c is varying between 6.5 to 7% which i think is a optimal glycemic control in this patient and that is quite sustained over the last one and a half to two years the patient was also quite happy that she was able to lose weight also and she did not suffer from even a single episode of hypoglycemia and her renal functions were also fine there was no worsening of the renal function she was not having any retinopathy in the two years and her liver function tests were also improved previously on the first visit her otpt sgut sgpt were borderline high and uh, she also got the ultrasound in the between and that had shown fatty liver and now after 2 years when she did her liver enzymes they were within the normal reference range and she wanted to repeat ultrasound and that showed a normal liver also and that occurs because of the empagliflozin we have with us evidence that has shown that empagliflozin causes reduction in the fatty liver or the non alcoholic state of hepatitis also so we were able to achieve multiple benefits not only the glycemic benefit but also reduction in the fatty liver along with the weight loss without any risk of hypoglycemia improvement in the renal function and no evidence of retinopathy so i think this combination is quite efficacious empalina combination and this should be preferred if you are not able to control blood glucose levels with metformin alone so the key points which i would like to emphasize are that whenever you receive a diabetic patient in your opd first and foremost is the lifestyle modification and when you want to start pharmacotherapy go with metformin as the first line at the full tolerated dose and after metformin if you think that the patient needs combination therapy go with sglt2 inhibitor or glp1 receptor agonist and if the patient goes with any of the drug and if you want to intensify the drug then we can use combination of sglt2 inhibitor and dpp4 inhibitor because pill burden is also reduced and the compliance is also increased so by reducing the pill burden you are obviously improving the compliance of the patient so the glycemic control will be improved and that will be sustained till long term thank you thanks a lot for the patient here